Good day everyone, I am Precious Jiwa Bernal, a BS Ed student at Mount Carmel College of Kasiguran. In today's video, I'm gonna be discussing about the methods of marking a grammatical error. Here are five error marking tips that you can use right away on that stack of papers waiting in your office. First, Assess your priorities as an instructor and those of your discipline. What is the most important writing issue that you think this student needs to work on? Second, only mark errors that you feel are serious, meaning they obscure meaning or that they would negatively affect the student's character in the eyes of someone reading the paper. The third one, Try to send the message that higher order concerns such as critical engagement developments of ideas and organizations should be attended to the first and are valued more highly. Whatever marking strategy you use, encourage students to develop self-editing and proofreading skills. And the fifth one, think of minor errors as marking up a written accent. Realizing that all multilingual students are in the process of acquiring a second language, the ability to write nearly error-free prose is a long-term goal that students should aim for. But it is unrealistic to expect this to happen quickly. And for certain idiosyncratic rules in English, such as article use age and idioms, students may always need to solicit feedback from others before submitting the final piece of writing. Here are the three approaches to marking errors. Remember that all of these approaches are more effective when paired with a strategy for holding the student accountable for making the corrections so that they develop their own editing skills. The first one is the color coding and highlighting. Second, correction symbols. And the third one is minimal marking. Color coding and highlighting. Similar to error codes, Color coding and highlighting uses a previously explained system for marking errors. This saves time when marking papers. Students often find it much easier to understand a document with different colored highlights than a document with scribbled, difficult to read shorthand markings. Here are the key and examples of color coding or highlighting. The second one is the correction symbols. These represent a relatively short list of correction symbols. Adopting a similar key and sharing it with your students at the beginning of the term can help streamline marking and discussing writing throughout the semester. This can be useful because it helps to develop a common language for describing and identifying errors. Longer and detailed charts can be developed depending on your goals time limitations, and level of comfort working with students on these errors. Often, though especially in a class not dedicated to editing practice, restricting your marking to a limited number of errors will be more effective. Here are the examples of correction symbols. And here are the error correction or editing symbols. Minimal marking. There are various forms of minimal marking ranging from highlighting or underlining errors without making comments to writing question marks or check marks in the margins to alert students to errors. 
An important aspect of this approach is to withhold a grade until the revisions are made or offer to raise the grade once the revisions are made. Here is the example of minimal marking. 